Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we get into self care that goes deep. It is self care that goes beyond taking care of your body. It's taking care of all the different parts of you and not just one at a time, like simultaneously. Sometimes we feel like, oh, I need to do something for my mind and now I need to do something for my body and now I'm going to do something for my spirit. Courageous self-care is finding ways to make ourselves feel whole. We'll connect with our wholeness because we are truly whole and sometimes we can start to feel a little fragmented when there's a lot of stuff going on. So that's part of what courageous self-care is about. What I feel about courageous self-care is that there is a lot that we don't know because the media tends to guide us into just taking care of our bodies for self-care. And so that's why it's important to show up to things like this. Give yourself the time to learn about what you don't know. And so I love to be a guide for you here. I've been studying topics like this for the last 10 plus years. I love talking about it, as you can tell. If it's your first time listening to the podcast, I've been doing it for over a year about a year and a half now. And I thought initially, uh, when I started the podcast, I could probably talk about courageous self-care for a year. And here we are a year and a half later, and I still have lots to say. So it's important to have a guide. And it's also important to get other outside uh, opinions and experiences. So I love to get guests on the show as well. So today I have with me Sheena Smith. Sheena, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Christina. Thanks for having me. Um, It's really exciting because I think uh, self-care, I can get that it just took you, like it's been over a year already of running your show. I think there's so much to it that no wonder you're not running out of topics and things because it's so interesting. Um, I'm a special ed assistant at a school board. I've been in special ed for 18 years and that's so I worked with all sorts of children with all sorts of disabilities and needs and I'm a dream builder coach and also an author. I currently am writing a book on children with um, working in the school system with children and it's called All Kids Can Thrive and it's a holistic educational resource for um, running a successful conscious classroom. As well as that, I am a mom to six children, and we, we're a his, mine, and ours family. We have two with special needs, so that adds some more into the pot of my knowledge and experience, and part of that is um, my oldest is my oldest with special needs is 22, and she has spina bifida, mm-hmm. and my 13-year-old has Down syndrome, so it gives me a, um, a good overview of physical disabilities as well as intellectual disabilities. Wow, that is amazing, Sheena. You have definitely got a lot of experiences coming at you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's my brain is lots. <laughs> yeah. So I'm curious, did you go into the special education before you had your daughter your 22-year-old daughter or after? Before. I knew I knew my whole life I would work with children, so that's been my 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 thing and I've worked with a lot of children. Hmm. And how did you come into doing the special needs focus? Um, well, by being a special ed assistant, that's usually who you work with. Mm-hmm. And along with my daughter being born with spina bifida, I felt like my whole life it led to that moment. So it mm. wasn't as devastating as some people might think it was because I feel that your attitude really matters. And uh, I just felt like I was led to it. And the same thing was with my son when I was expecting my son I thought oh I saw a child with down syndrome and I thought well I could handle that and next thing you know I have a child with down syndrome wow so. wow it sounds like you have taken a um a really positive approach to um to that with your kids of all abilities I guess right um, how did you I don't know if this is going to be your story of courage and if it is just you can say that and we'll talk about it later but how did you come to that approach um, rather than being devastated, like you said, some people are. Um, I would say just by being resilient. Mm-hmm. I've, from my own childhood, I've learned to be resilient. And, you know, I've, I've oft, often heard that people, if they, you were given the problems and you throw them all into a center of the room, you take back your own problems. So a lot of that is attitude and appreciating, you know, Instead of focusing on, you know, what was so terrible about each of those disabilities, it's focusing on what was so great about them. Mm, Beautiful. 
That's so powerful. And uh, for me, I don't have anyone with um, special needs in my life at all. And I really admire people like you who are immersed in it and are, uh, yeah, just getting all the gifts that are available to dealing with that, those, um, those different kinds of abilities. So very interesting. We're going to, now with six kids and this career, it sounds like you are giving to other people a lot. And I love to hear guests share what they do for their own self-care, a current favorite self-care practice. And I feel like it's important to get this information out there because self-care means different things to different people. And when we get when I get you to share on the show, you'll have an idea that will spark something in someone else, or they'll say, "Oh, I guess uh, I'm in that tough situation, and I don't have any excuse. If she's doing it, I can do it too." So I'd love to hear something that you find really nourishing. Sure. Um, well, what I found to keep on track was first of all just the attitude of gratitude mm -hmm. and being mm -hmm. grateful every day, and then. When when you have a child with special needs, you decide you're, many of us decide you're on a mission and you're going to find out whatever you can do to help your child. So you go and learn different things. I became a brain gym instructor and a certified nutritional consultant and just different things because my mission in life is to help people who hunger. So, But what I did was overload of things for not taking care of myself. So I hit overload and overwhelm and burnout and tired and exhausted and um, not being very good at receiving. So what I did was got into the self care path, path. And that was, um, you know, finding things to do for myself that I would love to do. And that includes anything from um, getting enough sleep, mm -hmm. eating proper foods, um, finding time to go in nature, learning how to meditate. That's something totally new to me was learning how to meditate and um, play time with friends, um, having a plan for the things that I do want to unfold and take place in my life and um, just having travel and adventures. So I, I do do lots of fun things. Mm -hmm. You're touching on a really important point, Sheena, that I want to elaborate on, which is um, often when we are filling ourselves up by giving to others, we are prolonging or putting off our own self-care, our own happiness, our own fun. And we think, well, I'll do it at the end. Or like we make a giant list of things to do and none of it is anything for us. It's always taking care of other people. And so the idea of bringing happiness and nourishment and attention to yourself every day, putting yourself on your list is so important because we don't need to say someday I'll do this when I have more time. It's super important and so valuable to say every day I'm going to do something that makes me feel happy or nourished or rested now. It doesn't have to be in the future. And the more we give that to ourselves, the better nourished we will be. So then we can give from a place of fullness rather than a place of burnout or exhaustion or resentment, which is what tends to happen when we're running on empty. I agree. That's where um, it takes courage to move beyond your overwhelm and stress in your life and be mindful and aware how, how we create our own happiness or we create our own unhappiness. And um, the quickest way I feel to unhappiness is comparison. Yes. Uh, Mark Twain awesome. says the comparison is, comparison is the death of joy. I say that to my kids all the time. <laughs> yeah. it, it makes sense. Totally makes sense. So I think that being happy is a form of courage. Absolutely. So, yeah. So our, I, go ahead. I was just going to say, so by being brave, you learn that happiness is an inside job. It doesn't have to do with the outside things. For sure. And it does take, you're exactly right. It does take courage to be happy because the status quo is not happy. The status quo is mediocrity. It's fear. It's worry. It's anxiety. And to rise above that and to be confident that it's okay to be happy even when other people are not, it, it does take courage. It's so easy to fall back into the status quo and the mediocrity. And so I, I agree with you. Courage, happiness does take courage. And also our brains are wired to focus on the negative. But fortunately, 
because of neuroplasticity, we can change that. And it does. I love, I love neuroplasticity, especially like with my children and working with special needs kids. Often you'll find people that'll say, you know, that's as much as they'll ever know, or, you know, that's all he'll ever learn. And I like love to tell them that the potential is so strong that they can learn anything. Mm. It's, like, it's an exciting thing. Yes, it gives everyone hope. <laughs> totally, that's what it does. It gives, gives you hope, and it's not hope isn't just like a way out; it's a way through. Mm-hmm. So, Sheena, what it sounds like listening to you is that you've really cultivated a lifestyle where self care is a priority, and you're very conscious of nourishing yourself from the inside out. Yes. Yeah, and you had to go to a place where that was not true at all <laughs> in yeah. order to. Well, I- I had to hit like, you know, where you hit rock bottom and you're just too exhausted, too overwhelmed and you think, okay, what can I do now? And if you look outside yourself, that's not where you're going to find what you need. You need to do, do the work and take action for the things that will make you feel better. Absolutely. And there's two choices when you're at that rock bottom place. You can either do it yourself and uh, educate yourself and read books and that kind of thing, which is the longer path. And it's a lot harder because you don't have support or you can find someone who does know more about you in that area has come through something like that, or has educated themselves on the fastest path through it. And uh, that's a mentor or a guide. It's, and so those kinds of people are out there. I'm one of those people. There are other kinds of people. You're a, you said a dream coach, a dream builder coach, a dream builder coach. Yeah, so it's so um, important to understand that even though the word self is in self-care, it's not something you do by yourself. It is so much more, um, it's so much more uplifting and fast, if we're going to get right down to it, it's so much faster with way less suffering to find someone in your life who can help you. um, Like a life coach or some sort of a guide. So that is my recommendation around self-care. It it's that's one of the mistakes people tend to make is they think that they should do it all by themselves and it's that's not it at all we do need support especially when we don't know what we don't know right and exactly when you're um down down in the dumps and not your rock bottom you you're never alone right and you learn to rest and not quit yeah beautiful well thank you for sharing that we're going to take a quick commercial break be sure to stick around because sheena is going to share a story of courage when we come back We're back. Thank you for being here. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> so I love to get guests to share a story of courage. And there's a whole bunch of reasons I love to do that. The one that I'm going to share with you today is courage is contagious. It's something I say a lot. Brene Brown talks about courage being contagious. And the more we hear other people's stories of courage, the more we bring that idea that courage is outside of us. We bring it closer and closer into us until we realize, oh, I'm courageous too. And courageous people do amazing things, even when we are faced with fear. So Sheena, I would love to hear uh, one of your stories of courage. Well, I have numerous stories. And one I'd like to tell you about has to do with never giving up, if that's okay, if that fits. Absolutely. Yes. Um, That takes courage for sure. (laughs) My daughter that's 21 now. In 2013, I found a note and it was dated April 2003. So quite a, quite a while ago, Mm -hmm. my daughter was actually five at the time. Mm -hmm. And here's what I said. I found a note that said, don't give up. This is my daughter, Tessa says out of the blue. If you give up, you don't get to be or do the things you want. I agreed and said, that's right. She continued, like, if you want to be a trapeze ballerina, you have to practice and practice and don't give up. (laughs) On the other side of the note, I wrote, because I'm one of those moms that writes everything down or keeps everything, I call them pieces of my heart. On the other side of the the note, I wrote, Earlier in the day, I was exhausted with lots going on with our house sale, bills, life insurance, um, work, holiday planning, packing, on and on, and I felt like giving up. But she was exactly right. Don't give up. That's how you get to get what you want. And I thought, wow, such wisdom from a five-year-old who through through no fault of her own 
was born with spina bifida, a child who's stolen my heart from day one. When I, when I found that note again, she was 16 and a half. And I read her the note and she laughed at the absurdity of her of the trapeze ballerina line. <laughs> trapeze ballerina coming from a five-year-old that couldn't wait there nor stand. A child who never walked except with an RGO, a cumbersome RGO brace. Becoming that trapeze ballerina would seem impossible, yet not if you believe everything and anything is possible. Together we wondered why she picked that analogy for, for not giving up. She didn't, she didn't remember, but I decided because I encourage my children to dream big, big, and as a believer of things happening for a reason, I often smile to myself when I can see things unfold in unexpected ways. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that piece of your heart. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I love that. And it, while you were reading it, I was covered in goosebumps, which we call truth bumps, right? So yeah. that the ultimate truth comes from those little mouths who uh, know so much. And uh, it was making me think of my daughter when she was little. The things she said she wanted to be when she grew up was a tap dancing, opera singing cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. I trapeze ballerina was my daughter's thing. That My next book after this All Kids Can Thrive book is going to be um, Trapeze Ballerina. Oh my gosh, what a great and idea. Parents. My book I'm currently working on is for, for educators, but the next one's for parents. And it's because you go through so much struggle with, with your children and it's you know, with special needs, it's like physically, emotionally, mentally draining that you don't want to quit. And I joke with my friends that, well, that are other mothers with special needs is we're not quitters. We're not giving up chocolate or wine just because we're not quitters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Sheena, you've shared such important and powerful messages. I know they're going to land really powerfully with the audience. I, I would love to hear from your experience, since it's not, not mine at all, for parents of special needs kids, what do you think is the most important advice you can give them? Stay present. Stay in the moment. Don't worry about the future too much. You know, of course, if there's lots of medical needs you're dealing with, you have to deal with them, but that's a present thing. But just be be grateful because there's so much blessing in, in it all. And um, one of my favorite quotes is, if one advances confidently in the direction of your dreams, you'll meet with success in uncommon hours. Mm. My daughter told me recently that she heard, I'm not sure who she heard it from, but she said that the souls of people who end up with um, special needs in this lifetime are so big that they simply couldn't be contained in a standard human body. That's really, really nice. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, and with my limited experience with people with special needs, I definitely see that like they're often such huge smiles or such connection to um, their, their inner child. It is really inspiring. And I can see how there would be so much to be grateful for mm -hmm. despite the challenges. Yeah. Well, you, it's all a matter of what you focus on. So having goals, plans, what you focus on, you'll see more of what, whatever you're focusing on. So focus exactly. on the good. Beautiful. I love that. Well, you certainly have a lot of great information and wisdom and experience to share. If people are wanting to reach out for, to you and connect with you, where can they find you online? Um, they can find me at All Kids Can Thrive on Facebook. Okay. You can also email me at allkidscanthrive at gmail, allkidscanthrive at gmail.com. Beautiful. My is currently under construction. Excellent. That's a great place to start. <laughs> and uh, when do you anticipate your book will be ready? This fall. It's with an editor right now. So this fall, it'll be available. Great. And so people will be able to um, access that from your Facebook page? Yes. Okay, great. So if you are someone who is connected and needing information about special needs in the classroom, or you know someone, do be sure to visit Sheena's Facebook page. And I'm sure you'll have information there when your website's up and running too. Thanks so much. 
You are so welcome. I'm going to put the link in, or ugh, <laughs> the link for the, um, what am I trying to say? The Facebook link. You don't have to type it in. You can go to the show notes and click on it and you can easily be taken to Sheena's Facebook page. And then you can connect with her there or you can type in the email. That's not hard. So Sheena, thank you so much for take, or for giving us the gift of your time to be on the show and share this realm of um, experience and wisdom with special needs. I really feel like you've given us a gift today. Thanks so much for having me, Christina. It was a pleasure. And anyone can contact me. Beautiful. Thank you. And listeners, thank you for giving yourself the gift of time. You can give yourself a big virtual golden star for uh, showing up today and giving yourself the gift of courageous self-care. I invite you to come back. This show airs once a week and it alternates between shows with guest experts and also teachings about courageous self-care and how you can incorporate it into your life. Thank you for being here. I look forward to connecting with you again next time. Bye-bye for now.